Hi, this is Paul from Test Data Services, and we're following on with the second part of the OpenID Connect video. What we were up to in the last part of the first uh, video was getting a refresh token in the implicit flow. And now we're going to recycle those identities. And we're going to go into a bit more detail. So if you remember from the first video, person A, uh, we can we can now redo that person. If I scroll up here and get person A's details, get random person A, it was William, William Clement. Okay, so let's remember that. Now we're going to do authorized code flow. Now authorized code flow is the, the one that everyone really should be using. When you do that code flow, you don't get a ID token back. There's no jot coming back. You get an access token, you get a refresh token, but you use these tokens to do a token exchange, but that's on a back channel. So the idea is that you have a nice secure app uh, application running on an app server somewhere uh, under your full control as opposed to a client. And then that app is able to submit to a different endpoint the access token and the authorization code, but it also passes a, a header. And the header it passes is an authorization header with basic and base64 auth. So I'm going to send this off so you can see what happens. Now when I hit the send button, we get this um, uh, ID token back. And if I go into jwt.io, we can see William Clement again, and we can see it's an up-to-date one, 14.02.45. Uh, now it's 14.03, but that's okay. So, uh, so that shows that we're able to get that, that value. Now you might remember in the very first step when we registered an application, we got this secret. So when we got that secret, uh, what we needed to do is we needed to use that secret to construct the authorization header. So what we did was we got the secret, we um, added the client ID, a colon, or concatenated the client ID, a colon, and the secret together. We did a base64 uh, conversion on it, and then we set that as an environment variable in JSON uh, called base64auth. So what that looks like, when we go back over here to the token exchange and to the headers, is this value here, that RG, that one there. You saw it on the screen. So that was an authorize, which gave us an access token. And then we did the token exchange. So to Basically, it means that there's three legs. If you read the OpenID um, uh, Connect uh, literature, there's three legs, and all three legs are nice and secure uh, with this. Now, there's two different ways to do a OpenID Connect authorization code flow. One is with a nonce, and one is without. That first one was without a nonce. This one, I have a random UUID, which is a generated value from within Postman. So that's being passed in as a nonce uh, query parameter. So if I fire this one off, and then I do a token exchange, now this token here, this jot here, if I copy and paste it like that, now we can see with and now this was the second uh, person, right? Remember we had two two people. We had person A and person B. Person B we'd set up as um, an employee ID, and we did that with that extra call to add to the scope. And we've also now got a nonce. So the reason this is useful, for obviously for replay attack, and it's built into the claims which are cryptographically secured by this RS-256 strength algorithm, using this key ID, which we explained in the previous video. So that means that you definitely know that that employee ID is, sorry, that this payload with all these claims is definitely legit because we've got this nonce in it. Obviously you want to check that the ID you get back um, has the nonce in it that you sent. All right, so now we're going to get a refresh 
token on that same person. So now if we grab this again, copy, paste. Now this time the refresh token, sorry, the refresh um, um, ID, the uh, what do you call it? The ID token as a result of the refresh call doesn't have a nonce in it and it doesn't need one because every time you do a call to get a refresh token you you use the last refresh token and you get a new one so if someone tried to use this twice they wouldn't be able to um, it it's already used up if they managed to intercept this refresh token though that would be a problem uh, but you would hope that they wouldn't be able to do that all right so the next thing is we're going to recycle our identities so that now we've got two ready for authorizing again. And now we're going to add this thing called an AMR. So the AMR I just added, it's basically a way of uh, telling the OpenID Connect system that someone has logged in with a certain type of secure login. Like they've used a hardware key or a software key or they've had an SMS message uh, or they've had a one-time password uh, or uh, MFA token or they're geolocated in a particular uh, way. So what we're doing is we're adding in this as a HTTP post uh, and we're putting in the AMR uh, of these values and a UID and a client and we're getting that echoed back to us if it succeeds. So when we do this add EMR, what we're doing is we're adding that into that particular um, uh, that particular call. Then, if we add uh, some extra scope, now we're adding some other claims. So we're adding in a test claim boolean just to show that we can have true false, a test claim set just to show we can have structure. Um, the structure can be any JSON structure. We've got an alphanumeric. We've got a numeric and we've got a, a, an alpha. And we've put a client ID, UID, and scope in there as well. And now, if we add a user info, now user info is different to scope because there's, uh, there's two ways you can get user information for an open ID call. One is in the ID token by interrogating the claims, you'll see them. And that's what uh, this, uh, this add scope will do and also add AMR will do. But there's a user info endpoint, and that can have much more verbose data. So in this test, we're setting up so that the user info endpoint will deliver this content. So now we're going to do an authorize. And then we're going to do a token exchange. And now, well, let's have a look at that token so you can see what it looks like. You can see it's a bit bigger. Copy. paste so now we can see the AMR in here and we can see those other claims in here which is great now this is very useful because if you're doing functional testing even if it's manual testing and you need to check that someone's got a hardware token or they've got a, a biometric a retina scan or a fingerprint they're messy to deal with even in manual testing much less automated testing but with this you could do these calls uh, you, you could uh, set up a script to run these, uh, these requests through these API calls and that could then set up your data so that then you, you can have your app, you click on the login button of the app, it will effectively do a pop uh, like what we've done already with the authorized call and it will log you in as that person as if you'd had a retina scan that was successful or as if you had a hardware key or token or whatever. So it's very, very useful. So that's um, the ID token and now if we fetch the user info call now the user info doesn't return you a token it just returns you a JSON structure with all of the key information from the identity which is already in the uh, JWT the JOT but in the claims of the JOT but it also gives you this user info data now if we change the user info data um, so I made a minor change to it. Then if we hit the user info request again, then you can see that we're actually fetching back the updated 
data. So the whole point of this series of OpenID Connect calls that you can make, and I'd like I suggest that you step through them, it'll really help you get a good understanding of how they work, is so that you can automate uh, your uh, functional testing, your load testing, or you can even simplify the setup for your manual testing uh, by dissociating the real users that you would have uh, from your test environment and instead swapping in a test data services population that's front-ended with an open ID connect uh, infrastructure so I hope this is useful I'll do another video which will have some other things like pixie for um, uh, uh, for a more secure version of uh, open ID connect calls for a single page application but I think that's enough to get you going hope you find this useful and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks